overhead supply is areas where people bought before at higher prices and could be areas where they might sell if the price rallies into that into that area. So now on on Tesla, you go okay. Where does where does overhead supply start? Well, it really and again I go back to drawing my lines. I make it simple and I I look at I look at uh, lows that the stock has made in the past, and it looks like a lot of lows were made above seven fifty six. The last real good rally was off that 756 area. Prior to that, it actually went down to 700 on one day. Uh, and then uh, back in January, it hit 792. So I'm saying that the majority of the overhead supply in this is really above you know, 756. And so now once you're below that, you've got now, there's three months, there's about six months of overhead supply in this stock. So every time it starts coming up into those areas, like 656, six, uh, sorry, 756 and, and higher, you're, you're being faced with people who are making decisions of, I've been in this stock for two months, three months, six months, and I've been down on it. And now it's come back close to where I bought it or, or it actually came to the price where I bought it. And they start thinking, hey, maybe I should sell out of it. So it's, it's, it's something that's real. That's something that's above you uh, that you have to be aware of uh, because there could be selling. It could limit the, uh, the, how far the stock could rally. Sometimes it takes a term. There are two things that have to happen. Either it has to take a lot of volume and a lot of demand to push it up through that overhead supply and power through that, or it's got to take time. And that's why a lot of these stocks that that uh, we've been going over that that you know are down again 50, 60, 70 percent. These things are not going to come back for a long time if they come back because. It's going to take time for those people that bought at higher prices to either finally realize they've got a loss and actually take it. And so that it, it just takes time and it takes months, if not years, for a stock to come down, come down and base and base and base. And all that overhead kind of disappears after about a year, a year and a half, and then maybe can reinvent itself, have a new product cycle, and then have another move again. So once you start, you start the the overhead starts piling up, then it just gets harder and harder for it to to get through. So, and then also the bigger the volume in an area, the longer time that it's spent in that price range, the longer and harder it'll take to get to get through it. Let's go to that AMD example that I used last week. Um, that. Um, so there's here's an example of where I was trying to buy on an undercut of the low and down in that area, and it rallied. Look, it rallied right into a hundred, and look how far one hundred is as a as a uh, resistance. I mean, if you if David, you can draw that line, just draw a, a line straight across one hundred, just to show how how long that is. So that. If you count the quarters, that's six months, that's nine, that's mine, maybe nine or 10 months of price action, uh, maybe even longer than that. Yeah, about 10 months of price action that that stock traded above 100. So you've got all those people, you've got all that volume that it was above there. And you see how it came and it went right into resistance. When I saw it starting to reverse off that the next day, then I sold the whole thing out because it's that that's a, a wall and just think i mean i don't know if it's a good analogy just think of it as blocks of cement that are just being just being poured above you that are hard to get through and um and those are those can be good shorting points too because you've got that overhead resistance you also have a moving average moving average lines are coming down and just think of it it's just it's a weight that that is just pressing on the stock that ha that the stock has to power through in either one of two ways either the price and volume is super strong or the time just wears out that overhead supply um 
And, and the, the other point too, is that that's the advantage of buying a stock when it's going into new high ground. You don't have all this weight above you. You don't have all these buyers above you. When a stock is going into new high ground and, and you can just look at AMD when it's coming out of that base at, at 120, um, 120, 122 there, there's no one, there's no one higher. There's no one above you that is saying, hey, I've owned this stock for a couple of months and I want to sell if it gets back up to it. Everybody's happy when you're into new high ground. And something, and that's why it sometimes these stocks can just run when they get into new high ground. There's no weight of overhead supply on them. So that's that's something to think about when you're buying a stock at new high. There's no there's no overhead, no overhead supply. Let's look at another example. Go to uh, if you can go to Shopify, and let's see if I can. Yeah, sh yeah, Shopify. And if you look at the, um, you look at the date. Um, let's see, around like the February first of this year, the stock, the stock broke through. Um, well, uh, just a few weeks before that, it broke through a thousand on, uh, on to the downside. And so, what did you have then? The stock broke a thousand, came down to eight hundred or seven eighty, and then rallied back up. Well, where did it rally back up to? It rallied right back up under a tremendous amount of overhead supply that that started back. I mean, it goes back over a year and a half ago, or a year and a few quarters ago. How many times it hit that ten twenty one uh, uh, one thousand and five one thousand and twenty five? So. There's another good example of when a stock rallies, well, what's it going into? It's going into one, two, three, four, four quarters of overhead, overhead supply. Um, and then let's look at NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA, the same thing, just this was actually more recently on, um, it, it broke 200 and, it, it looks like 208, 206. You can just draw a line just underneath that area going back over the last six months. And the stock broke through it on, uh, at the beginning, in, uh, beginning of April. And then on, um, on May 5th, sorry, May 4th, stock rallied back up above 200 ran into overhead supply and it's been down ever since. So if you own the stock and it's going into overhead supply, it might be a time to, to just finally cut your losses. It could be a place where you could be shorting the stock. It's, it's also a, uh, something that you should be looking at all the time. If you're thinking about buying a stock that has been down for a long time, how much overhead supply does it have? You know even a few points above it or, or 10 points above it. You can trade just about anything over a very short time period. But if you're going to be holding stuff longer than a number of weeks or longer than a month or two, you got to make sure you know where that overhead supply is if you're buying a stock that has been down. But most of the stocks that I'm buying, I mean, even the ones we've mentioned, I'm looking for stocks that are closer to their, their highs and, and not suffering under the weight of uh, of all this all this overhead. So that's just a I think a good quick review of why it, you you don't want to be buying stocks that are down, you know, 40, 50, 60 percent. You just got a tremendous amount of overhead above you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.